Is life a school? I'm told the answer is no. We don't keep coming back into physical form and back to the spirit and back to the physical and back to the spirit in order to learn something. Life is not a school. Conversations with God tells us that life is a process by which we remember and have an opportunity to re-express re and to expand on who we really are. So life is a process of remembering and evolving and expanding so we can experience more and more and more and more of the totality of who we really are. Now here's an important question. Is there any relationship between what happens in our physical life and what happens in our spiritual life? That is, is there any relationship between what is occurring now and what will occur in the hereafter? Well, that's a question that every religion, every organized religion on the face of the earth has sought to answer. And most of the organized religions say yes. Yes, there is a relationship. What you do here in the realm of the physical is going to impact and affect what you experience here when you return to the realm of the spiritual. And that is where we encounter the entire idea of heaven and hell reward and punishment. So we confront a major question that, that revolves around the whole topic of death. And that question has made death not just a mystery, but a fearful thing for many, many people. Because many, many people on the earth are fearful that they may not have lived in the right way, they may not have done everything they needed to do, or they may have done some things that they weren't supposed to do, but, but for one reason or another, when they die, they could not be going back to God in heaven, but could in fact be condemned to everlasting damnation. Not for a short period of time, as I mentioned before, not for a little bit here and there, but for the rest of eternity, everlasting damnation. Several religions on the earth teaches that concept, presumably in order to frighten us or to scare us into behaving in the way that those religions teachers feel that we are supposed to be behaving in order to please a dominating and demanding God who requires us to behave in a certain way in order to allow us to come back into heaven. I, I'm going to leave it to you to decide whether that's true for you. I'm not going to sit here and tell you uh, that that shouldn't be true for you. If you believe that's true, embrace that belief and live your life accordingly. Conversations with God made it very clear to me that that is not true. When I was asked on one of the national television programs in the United States a few years ago, what is God's message to the world? A particular TV host said to me, Neil, you claim to have had an actual conversation with God. If you really did have a conversation with God, what's God's message to the world? And you know, they always ask you those questions when you have about 30 seconds left in the program. They never give you an hour and a half to give an answer to a question that big. They say, you know, Neil, we have about 30 seconds. Could you give it to us in one paragraph? And I thought about it for just a moment, just a flicker of a time. And I thought, what can I say to this man in 30 seconds in answer to the question? What is God's message to the world? And the answer came to me just that fast. Ah, I said, you know what? I can do it in less than one paragraph. I can give it to you in five words at least five words in English. And so he said, okay, here is God's message to the world in five words, Neil. And I was able to deliver those five words. Here is God's message to the world in five words. You've got me all wrong. You've got me all wrong. I don't need anything from you. I don't demand anything from you. I don't require anything from you. There is no judgment. There is no condemnation. There is no punishment. There is no everlasting damnation. Guys, you've got me all wrong. If God were to punish us, 
God would be punishing itself because there's, there's nothing else but God. And that's the second part of this new theology from Conversations with God. Of course, as you know, the cosmology holds, it tells us that there is only one thing. All things are part of the one thing there is. There is only one thing. There is only that which we call God. Or if you please, if you'd like to use different words, the essential essence, the pure energy, that which is. Or to get really very simple in our choice of words, life. Life itself is that which God is. And all of us are part of life. All of us are part of that which God is. Each of us is like a wave is to the ocean. We are an expression of the ocean, but in no way separate from it, in no way other than the ocean. We are simply an individuated expression of the ocean, but never separate from it. And that's the truth of our being if we believe what conversations with God has to say to us. There's, there's no separation. Therefore, if God were to punish us with everlasting damnation and eternal misery, God would be punishing itself and causing itself to experience everlasting damnation and eternal misery, and that simply doesn't make sense. Hat dir dieses Video gefallen? Gib uns ein Zeichen und lasse einen Daumen nach oben da. Bist du interessiert an weiteren solchen kostenlosen Videos? Dann abonniere unbedingt unseren Kanal und drücke die Benachrichtigungsglocke, denn nur so stellst du sicher, dass du kein weiteres Video verpasst. Danke dir und bis zum nächsten Video.